I climbed the pyramids of Giza in Egypt. I uh, went to jail for that one. I literally got arrested. Ran across the pitch in the Champions League final. That one got a billion views. It shark diving. Climbed the ladder of death in Austria. I've gone gorilla trekking in Uganda. Just any kind of adventure that you can imagine in the world. I've probably done it. You can walk in. Hi. <laughs> oh, you look so cute in your little talentless gear. Is this talentless? I, I know it very well. It's my favorite. No brand. So this talentless one doesn't have because I, talentless it's the sends best. me so much stuff. And I'm like, they're ride or die or whatever. They're, the material is so good and just so fits good. so well. It looks so good on you. Like, I feel like you don't you don't look like you look homeless, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know, because my favorite thing is to wear sweats every day. I'm like... Literally. I you feel, do love it. You wear your sweats with just, like, your top, you're rocking the office. Dude, like I literally go to work like that every day, and that's, like, my thing I commit to. I'm like, if I'm going to run a business, I want to commit to being able to wear whatever I want, no matter who I I'm meeting that. with. So, like, I literally wear mostly no makeup and wear sweats every single day, so... That's the best. I actually wear suits every day, but that's because I kind of like. You're that. like who I wish I was. I <laughs> wish I was like that, but I just, I just, I just already know I like can't commit, so I just am like. It is. All right, you I'm slowly lose like <laughs> the like. I'm like, oh god, I'm tired, and I'm wearing the same outfit all the yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I'm so excited to have you here. Um, so welcome back to Billion Dollar Baby. I am Tara Electra, and this podcast breaks down the billion dollar ideas of today's cultural leaders that push past the traditional route to create their own pathway to success. Today, I am in bed with a real life superwoman. Her <laughs> resume includes real estate developer, helicopter pilot, licensed skydiver, financial investor, and content creator that has over. 3 million followers across social media. She has brains, beauty, and ambition and is going to break down how to live your best life and have it all. I'm so excited to introduce my good friend, Kenzie Wolnanski. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be on your podcast, Tara. Uh, we've been friends for so long I now, know. which is crazy. And to watch you kind of do what you've done is so inspiring. You've always really been such an inspiration in my life. So oh, thanks for I having me you. on. you. Vice versa. That's why I'm so excited to have you on. I've literally watched you live your life to its fullest. So, so funny when you, I remember one time you told me that you're like, I want to do this. I want to have a business and all this stuff. I'm like, I literally look at you on social media and I'm so jealous of you every day. I'll be like sitting in bed and I'll be like, okay, Kenzie's just traveling the world and in Iceland right now, like going down the slopes, like you're just doing the most wild stuff. And you've just, I feel like you've really lived your life to its fullest. And one of the things I was thinking about too, that I was like, I need to say on this podcast is like, you don't don't just jump out of a plane with someone. You go get your license and do it professionally so you can jump out of planes by yourself. And you don't just get on a helicopter. You go get your license so you can fly helicopters by yourself. Like, it's insane. So, like, what makes you live your life like that? I kind of just really like challenges. And I think you and I both think really differently in life, which yeah. is so good. But I just really believe that we can do absolutely anything. Yeah. So I kind of always love the challenge of like when I get an idea in my head and it becomes kind of a problem in my life because I'm just <laughs> all in. And so like if I get an idea, like I'm like, I want to become a helicopter pilot. Like that sounds so cool. Then I just go do it. Wow. And then I don't realize it's a two year education program and I'm <laughs> in it for two years and I always see through to the end. But I have these ideas. I was like, I really want to be bilingual. And then I just started taking Spanish classes every single day until, you know, and I still am in them every single day until now. I'm almost fluent, but it's like, Jesus, I just really amazing. see it through and, um, and it, it's a lot of work, but I also like, I just love really putting myself in hard things and, and cause that reward, I really get fulfilled, um, in achieving goals, wow. you know, and a lot of people get fulfilled in different things. But for me, I'm just such a goal and goal oriented person. Yeah. It's insane. I can't believe I forgot about the Spanish thing. I remember <laughs> you doing that. That's insane. And yeah. You're almost fluent now. Yeah. That's amazing. But it's crazy to see the behind the behind the scenes because it's like still, it just takes so much more time than you'd ever think, you know? Like yeah. every morning, because I have to go to work, like at 7 a.m. I have Spanish class. 
you know, and it's like, who are you <laughs> every morning? And I'm like, and then when you're this far in, there's so many days and I'm like, I'm exhausted. I'm running a business. I'm running my social medias. I'm trying to do so much that I'm like, I don't want to take Spanish today, but I'm so far in. I can't stop. You know, I'm like, oh I have to go be God. fluent now. <laughs> That's insane. You literally blow my mind. You really are the real life superwoman. Oh, That's like what you. we dream to do. Oh, but then you're just like, okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. So that's what I hope. I hope I inspire people to kind of just go do it, you know? And yeah. a lot of people, like, I'm very sure of who I am and very mature. And I think the only reason that is, is because I've just tried everything. Yeah. You know, I wasn't afraid of what people thought. I just did everything that ever kind of intrigued me. Yeah. Because now I know, oh, that's for me. That's not for me, you yeah. know? So I really want people to just, like, because we're so taught, like, you go get your degree, you go to school, and then that's your career for the rest yeah. of your life. And most people aren't happy in their career. Yeah. And they're so scared to tell someone, like, I want to go try this job because then if it doesn't work out, they're judged. But who cares? Go try five jobs. Like, find the one for you, you know? It's just amazing that you even have that feeling to, like, okay, like, I'm kind of curious about, you know, skydiving looks cool. Like, I'm kind of curious what that's like to, like, go get my license and do it by myself. Like, it's just crazy that you actually, like, people have those thoughts, but like, it's crazy that you actually just like commit and actually do it. Like, what do you feel like? Because I don't know. I don't know what interest. I only do that with things that like really interest me yeah. because yeah. I'm like, I, don't, I feel like I can only commit to so many things, but you clearly are like living proof that you can do a lot of things. Yeah. So like, what makes you feel like, like what gets you to commit and like, how do you commit to your goals like that? I'm just a very committed person to a fault. So I guess it's like, cause like for, for me, I'm always like, I can commit because I'm like, okay, that's going towards my career. Yeah. Like if, if jumping out of a plane actually like made me more money and like, or, but it kind of did success. for me. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, because of my well, brand, you know, yeah. my brand online and since yeah, I'm so true. committed to my so work, something it kind of made sense for. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Cause I was like, fuck, I like, I would have to make sure it like aligned, aligned with something. Whereas I feel like you can, you're also doing stuff that just fulfill you as a human too. Like the way you go travel and go to different countries and meet new people. Like you're also doing stuff that's just fulfilling you in a lot of different ways. Yeah. And just seeing like, yeah, it's so, you know, cliche, but we really only have one life. And so I'm like, and the more that I do actually, the more I want to do, you know, yeah. which gets so exciting, but I really just get so fulfilled by those, like doing those really crazy things, those bucket list items. I feel like my whole life has just become a bucket list, I yeah, guess, literally. you know, like the way that I live, but it really just excites me. Like for me, I can push really hard in my career if I know okay, I'm going to push hard for three months because I got a two week trip to New Zealand that I'm, you know, driving in a van. Like that keeps me going, you know? That's so I need so stuff cool. like that to kind of keep me going and get me motivated. <laughs> I wish I did that stuff. You You're should, so cool. Todd. You're you don't so take cool. enough time off of work. <laughs> I know. That's why I'm like the <laughs> typical work person. I like don't do anything else like but work. Yeah, it's hard for me to have a personal life because it's hard for me to feel like, okay, if I take that time away from work that this obviously we all know that it makes you better once you go to yeah. work. Like, but then I'm like, does, I don't know. It's hard for me to like really push myself to do that. I'm like, oh no, I'm fine. Like, maybe, yeah. you know. And then you get stuck in the rut of I'm fine, you know, but it also like you got to treat yourself, you know, and be rewarded yeah. or else you are going to burn out, you know, yeah. and that's what I would see with myself. Like if I do those, I don't burn out. Like I feel yeah. so thankful for my career. I'm really focused. I'm not wanting to be somewhere else because yeah. I know like, oh, I've done that. I've done this, you know? Yeah. That's cool. You have things you're looking forward to. Yeah. It's weird. Like literally if I book a trip at this point because I'm so obsessed with working, I like dread it. I can imagine that because you're a control freak too. Yeah, you, I'm like, like, oh shit, I have to go here. And yeah. I'm like, oh, it's such a whole thing for me. Yeah, it's I so mean, I will say now that like I have my real estate career, um, like, you know, developing it's so much harder, you know, yeah. like with content creation, I was so, so blessed with that opportunity to yeah. really create around the world and get that time. But yeah, when you run a business, like, and you have employees and you have things like there's no checking out ever. And so it's so much harder. I mean, I haven't traveled in actually a long time for me. Yeah, It's been like 
probably I mean almost all year this whole year I haven't really, really oh wow I do weekends things yeah. a lot like I'll do like a little weekend in Santa Barbara or yeah. weekend in in Dana Point but like very close driving so yeah. I can clock out for a Saturday and Sunday but I can't really leave right now for two weeks yeah so that New Zealand trip that I was talking about was booked and we canceled it so no way that was heart-wrenching for me because I was like it's been a while, but yeah. I know now what I want and what I need to commit to. And that's building this real estate empire, you know? Yeah. So it's like, got to sacrifice. I've yeah. done the fun things, you know, yeah. I've done it all. And that's why I think people should do it when they're young too, you know, because I did so, I traveled 50 countries before I was 24, you know? Crazy. And so at, you could be 24 and just deciding. And I really knew who the heck I was at that point yeah. after going to 50 countries, traveling the world, you know? And so do it when you're young. If yeah. you're young, like you can go to college if you want. I love that for you. But it, I would just go travel the world, figure out who you are. And then after you go do that, you're only still 24 and you can yeah. like pick up and really figure out what career's for you, you know, because that's I feel like cool. that's the only carefree time in your life. You don't have kids. Nobody's relying on you. Like just go. Yeah, that's cool. Now, I want to get into obviously your real estate empire, but I first want to start with how you built your social media. Mm -hmm. I like I've been friends with you for a while. So I watched you like grind, hustle, come up with ideas for videos and like you were doing some crazy shit. So <laughs> <laughs> I just want to walk people through like what what is the life of being a content creator and what that really actually entails because I think there's so many young kids nowadays they're looking up to influencers over celebrities yeah, yeah. and like they all want to be content creators and so I want to kind of touch on that like what what was that life like for you how do you feel like you were able to build to where you are today I think social media is really equivalent to a business. And a lot of people don't think that, you know, yeah. and the way that my mindset was, I really treated it like a business, meaning that I clocked in, clocked out nine to five. I worked every single day. It wasn't like, oh, just take a photo and go hang out with my friends. Yeah. It was very much so like there's five different platforms. You have Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, yeah. Instagram, Twitter, all these things. So every day we had a plan. We had Monday meetings, what content was going to be created, how it was going to work for my niche, me being like the professional stunt woman. It was really just like, you have to put out, like when TikTok came out, I mean, I remember when we made a few TikToks yeah. in your old apartment, but like even at that time it was like, okay, it took me a little bit to get on. But then the, when I realized, okay, I got to be, be on, we were doing three TikToks per day for Crazy. like probably a year, you know, until like that got me to three million on TikTok. And so it's like, if anybody really wants to do social media, like I know it seems really beautiful and really fun and it definitely is. It's one of the best careers, but if anybody could do it, they would, yeah, you know, so and true. you have to be self-motivated. No one's telling you to find that trend and go make that TikTok. Nobody's telling you to be different and create these ideas. Like you need to be a creator and it's all about putting out as much content as possible. And I did get burnout, out, you know, yeah. for a while because it's like so demanding on you, especially the field that I was in. Like I would do a crazy stunt and stand on top of an airplane, no parachute. And then the next day it's like, what's next? Yeah. And it's never, it's, it's every day and you're super validated by the, that engagement every single day. But it's like, you really, it's not like a movie where you create a movie for an entire year yeah. and people are like, that's so beautiful. That was amazing. It's every day you need more and better content and ours were full production and videos, you know? So it gets to a lot and my body was tired. You know, I broke broken my shoulder. I had broken my ankle and I was just like, whoa, you know, like it's so much more than people think. Yeah. Unless obviously you're an Instagram model, you just post photos. And, you know, I do a lot of that now because it's, I don't have time with my business. I just post photos of my life. Um, but it's so much easier. But when yeah. you're creating a brand or you're a creator, a video creator, it's a lot more than people think. What's cool now is like, I, I like that you kind of showed all that because you're actually the first influencer and content creator that I've talked to that actually said it like that, yeah. which I super resonate with because that's what I've seen for content creators. Like people don't, they underestimate how hard it is to do it yeah. and commit. And like, like you said, you're the one that has to motivate yourself. No one else is going to, especially yeah. when you're making content, like you have to create it like that. So 
um, it's cool that you kind of walked through how you got to where you are, which is like the most important part. It's like now you obviously have this huge following. You have that as a part of your brand, which is great. So it's cool that now you can kind of slow down and be like, okay, now what's next? Because you really got there by pushing yourself in this way. But it's hard too because you can build it like um, build your following. But then unfortunately I did take a break because I wanted to build my real estate empire and your engagement drops. You're like, you know, and so it's like, Unfortunately, you it's a constant you, battle. Yeah, you can't just passively do it yeah. anymore, you know? Like you constantly need to be grinding and so now I'm back trying to post consistently, you know, yeah. and like it's a lot, you know? It's so it whole, never ends. You can't just like grow it and be like, "Ah, oh, yeah. Thank you so much, you know? Like unfortunately, <laughs> I wish, but <laughs> that's so true. <clears throat> or you can't sell the brand, which sucks too, you know? I guess unless you're Mr. Yeah. Beast cuz I've heard, but you can't like it's not like, you know, where you can build a company and exit. Yeah. You know, so there's no exit. I guess I could sell my social medias, but it's probably more, not for a lot. <laughs> yeah. But there is like so many businesses you can build off social media, yeah, yeah, which I've sure, seen you do. Sure. And and so I think that's the point. But yeah, it is I get I it's a hundred percent true. I think you get stuck in this rat race. And there are so many influencers today that are constantly they make that content, they go viral and they probably get burnt out and then they start to get like doubtful on themselves. Like, oh, my engagement is dropping. They feel mm-hmm. like they need to do more. What else could I do? It's like a whole never ending battle. It's, it's like, a mental it's a- game for sure too because like you're just getting opinions constantly from everybody. And even me, like in, in I was so niche down that I realized that like now if I post anything else, especially on TikTok, my, my fan group is like, we don't want that, you know? Yeah. So unless I'm doing crazy adventure travel or adventure stunts, they're really not that interested. So, so I'm like, dang. You're like, I can't live like my life like that for the rest of my life. <laughs> I'm like, Where else do I go in the world? What else do I do? I've already done everything. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, Walk them through some of the things you've done on videos. Um, okay, so we, we have like <laughs> planned out crazy stunts that have gone pretty viral, but... Um, I climbed the pyramids of Giza in Egypt, uh, went to jail for that one. Yeah, literally got arrested and yeah. everything. Um, <laughs> ran across the pitch in the Champions League final. That one got a billion views. Crazy. Um, we did climb the ladder of death in Austria. I've gone gorilla trekking in Uganda. Just any kind of adventure that you can imagine in the world. I've probably done it. Shark diving, you know, all the things. <laughs> Literally everything. You're like, what else do I do? You run out of things. There really isn't that much crazy, crazy shit. things to do. Yeah, you like would jump out of a plane like on the regular, like on a Tuesday. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm like week. in the office and she's jumping out of a plane today. <laughs> yeah I was like it's so like it's so like inspiring though like you've gotten to live that and do all that and it's that's what's so beautiful about the way you've lived your life so I think it's very cool when you were growing up did you envision your life to be like this when I was growing up actually kind of yeah I think it's the power of manifestation or just believing in yourself even if you don't believe in manifestation just like I don't know why I was always the kid. I was very motivated my whole life. You know, I was senior class president. I was valedictorian. I was, you know, a swimmer or a cheerleader or captain of the cheer team. Like all of those things at the same time, you know? So I just always like to do everything and be an overachiever. And I always had this feeling like deep inside me um, that I wanted more and that I was meant for more. Yeah. Which I, and maybe that's like ego or whatever people want to, want to call it. But genuinely I, equate all of my success to that feeling because if I didn't believe in myself or know that I was meant for more, I wouldn't have gone and done it, you know? And so I think anybody can have that. I just really got lucky and that was really inside me. But if you put that inside you and just know you can do anything and you, and you have such confidence in yourself, you're going to do it, Yeah, you know? Because so many people lack that confidence. What would you say to someone that does lack that confidence and wants to achieve more goals and then maybe does doesn't like believe in themselves or doesn't set themselves to it. Well, I think the mind is um, very powerful and also you can be in control of yourself rather than your mind, than your mind in control of you. And so, so I think it would just take a lot of exercise, you know, to be like really set your mind to it and be like, I'm going to write down every single day that I'm, I'm meant for this. I'm better than this. Like train your mind to think differently. Yeah. So you know, true. and I always would hear too. And one, one of the things I've learned too is like when you set a goal 
and then maybe you don't achieve it. Like one of the things you might do is like, oh, I want to, you know, make a TikTok every single day. Yeah. And like maybe one day you missed it. Like one of the main things that I've that I've learned too is to not be so hard on yourself when you do miss it. Yeah. Because then it's just reinstalling like a negative pattern and making you feel bad about it, which then brings more of those situations. So being like, it's okay, you know what? I missed that day, but I'm going to get up tomorrow and I'm going to do it again. And then when the times you do it, you celebrate those times. Yeah. And be like, wow, I'm proud of myself today because then that it reinstalls like a positive. Yeah. Um, or adding accountability, you know? Like I think something that's really important is like something that I... I always do, which is a little trick, is I tell people I'm going to do something. Because then I'm kind of held against, so I'm like, You're like, oh, oh shit, I told them. I'm going to go do that, and I tell it, or I tell it online, or I tell it, like, you know, even if you, you just have your family and friends on your Instagram, like, just go say, like, you know what? I'm going to quit my job and go travel the world. And then people are going to expect you to do that. So now you're kind of held accountable. So if that helps, you know, kind of helps me like That's cool. saying I'm going to do it. And then I'm like, oh, shoot, everybody's expecting me to do it. I got to go do it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's cool. That's a cool trick. Does it feel like ever enough? Uh, you know, mental health is a real thing. Yeah. And you really, especially once you start to reach these peaks of highs, um, the lows get low, you know, it's like that. And, it, and then you wonder, cause you have these goals and you're like, I would love to have millions of followers. I would love to, you know, and then when you have those things, you realize yeah. it didn't feel the same as when you thought it would. And then you want more and you want more and you want more. And so I think that's something that a lot of people struggle yeah. with. Um, especially in the creator community or in the actor community. Um, yeah. I think a lot of people struggle with that. So it's definitely hard. I think that's when you realize that, certain things matter and you really just got to dive into what matters to you yeah. and like family and friends and th those important things. Because I think if it was just all these goals, I don't think it ever will be enough. No. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was going to say, cause once you achieve one of your goals, do you feel like you feel fulfilled? I imagine. And that's why you do it. But like, do you feel like that lasts for you or do you feel like you're thinking about the next thing you want to achieve? It doesn't typically last long for sure. Yeah. You know, um, and I'm such an overachiever. I think that's like, it's such a br beautiful thing, but it's also really hard on myself because yeah, it's never going to be enough. So yeah, that's why I've, I've tried different things, searching for, for that fulfillment. Yeah. And I, it's a hard question, you know, I, yeah, I know. I I'm think not... it doesn't last long for me. <laughs> No, and it's 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 cool to kind of think about because it's like, okay, well, once I achieve these things, what's going to actually like stay with me or make me feel fulfilled long term? And I think that's the question we're all wondering about. Yeah, we, don't we really all know. don't know. <laughs> we do not know. And I think there's phases in your life. Like you went and traveled, you did all that. That's fulfilling to you. You feel like, okay, now I can put my time into being here in one place and having your home yeah. and things like that. So it's also like periods of your life. But I think the coolest thing is that you actually pushed yourself to do those things that you were curious about yeah so that way you can feel more fulfilled on the next thing that you do because you yeah. know you did that so and everything I do I think I'm a little closer to finding you know that fulfillment like every time I, or who I am yeah. you know it's always a journey of like figuring out yourself and what makes you happy yeah do you feel like you can be successful have a great relationship have amazing friends in your life do you think you can have it all at once I definitely do. I, I really, really do. And I think you ne need to. Yeah. I think the only way to properly be successful is to make all those things work, at least in my life, you know, like, but I'm, um, I'm also like, I'm, I'm a sober person. I don't do drugs and I maybe have a glass of wine, you know, but I don't really go out, you know, so yeah. I really do correlate a lot of bad things with that kind of realm and who you yeah. associate with, unfortunately. And I think like when I stepped back from the scene of LA and the going out and those things, like really it was like, I really found so much more happiness in like, okay, having a quality relationship, having quality friends, having a quality career. And I noticed it really affected my career if I didn't have my quality friends wow. or my quality relationships. So for me, I have to have that balance. So I think people should strive for it. You know, if you just commit everything to your career, you're like not fulfilled. So you can't bring your best to your career. You know, so, true. so for me, I need my quality friends and I'm really particular about that. And like, I have a really amazing man in my life now who really yeah. like supports me in my career. And I don't think I could be the best 
in my career now if I didn't have that. That's so cool. I'm so happy you said that because my sister was kind of pointing that out to me and it's something I didn't even notice until recently after she pointed it out. She's like, wow, I noticed I was like, if if I was just doing my career, then like I would sometimes like get depressed. And then I was like, okay, when I hung out with my friends, I was actually better when I was working because I actually saw friends and I felt fulfilled by that. Yeah. And so she started to realize like, okay, if I'm not paying attention to actually having f- relationships in my life, it's affecting my work. And like, it's, w- it's crazy to think that those things actually translate together. So like really actually committing to working on them all, which is really hard for me to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't do that, but I know I should yeah I yeah I definitely see that with you (laughs) and I know you're on your journey you know and like you're you work harder than anyone I know so like what you put in your business is just like some people could never even fathom you know so like I see how it could be very draining to have other things in your life it feels like exhausting for me to go hang out with someone of course I don't even want to speak especially because I see so many people in a day yeah I already have like so many people I see on a regular basis that by the time I get home I'm like I want to be like in a cocoon yeah and that's when I started to really pay attention to social settings that were draining it versus filling yeah and that's what I'm super crazy about now that's like interesting. every person that you hang out with you should walk away and say wow is my cup full or am I drained that's and crazy. then I did that and then the second I felt a little drained by someone it was a little uncomfortable I wasn't like couldn't just kick my feet up and feel like I walked away smiling then I kind of cut them out of my life. That's amazing. You know, and so now every person in my life that I do see and I do hang out with, I feel so much full from and it's relaxed. It's easy. Yeah. I don't, if I've had a long day of work, it's not an extra commitment. It yeah. really is just like, oh, you know, like tonight, like it's Friday night and me and my friends are playing pickleball tonight. Aww, and like so cute. that stuff that I love and we're all going to go play some pickleball, probably get some like, you know, little food after and just hang out. And like, so cute. it's all friends that love the same things as me and it's very relaxed. So I feel very full. Yeah. So maybe it's like an exercise in your life to yeah. like, but it takes a lot of work to get there, you know, so I can see why that's a hurdle you don't want to but I think you really need to find those people like you're so brilliant you're so kind and you've all your career is in the scene yeah so you've never really ventured out to kind of find your people that connect with your soul rather than your drive you know and so if you found that and really committed to it I think it could really change your whole world and life you know yeah it's so interesting I feel like there's so many people that have that they either have tons of friends and that's like what they pay attention to but that they're not fulfilled at work yeah or maybe they don't really have many friends and then they're just focused on what they're doing or what they're trying to build and so it's so interesting that that can affect your both sides and you can't have it all right now I do feel like I have it all wow you're like the ultimate girl like Jesus oh, Christ stop. you really are stop like you're like no, what I, we need to achieve, like I'm achieving to be the way you are Jesus no it's like no, crazy no, no. you live this life I don't meet many people like that Thank you. That means a lot. I think I'm very aware and I think I really am good to make changes if it needs to happen, you know? And like, I really wasn't when I, when I did make it in social media and I was in the scene, like I never felt depression before. And then I felt that because I still felt like I had this career and I was supposed to be so happy, but I wasn't with the right people. And I always felt like I had social anxiety, but I'm actually an extrovert. I always thought. So I was so confused by it because I was like, I have social anxiety, but I'm an extrovert. And then I realized it was just the people I was hanging out with. That's crazy. You know? So now that I hang out with different people, when I'm my friends, I'm silly, I'm goofy, I'm an extrovert. But around like anybody in different scenes, I was like, oh my God, I'm so anxious. Like, what do I say? Do they like me? You know? And then- That is so, oh my God, I love you. That is so, such a good point to bring, like, bring yeah. up. So find your people, That's you know? So like amazing. Well, I go on friend dates, like crazy, and I will like, I'm kind of crazy in it. I'm like, what time do you go to bed? <laughs> what do you like, what do you like to do for fun? Like, <laughs> do you drink? <laughs> You're like on a literal date. Yeah, literally. And I'm like, it's kind of crazy, but I found my people and all my friends, like we look at each other and we're like, 9 p.m. You want to head to bed? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's cool. Like we're all on the same page. So I feel like I could totally be myself and not be judged. Yeah. That's so cool because I seriously notice that all the time is like they're when the times I've went to like influencer parties or events with all these like little famous social media kids, yeah, there's a lot of insecure energy there because a energy. lot of them are comparing themselves to each other or feeling the same mm-hmm. ways. Like, what do I say? What do I do? And then everyone's trying to be something because they think that's what everyone else is expecting.
expecting. And so like it is a lot of insecure energy. And I've noticed myself get weird in those situations. Be like, why do I feel freaking weird? Right. <laughs> so it's such a good point. It's like noticing when you are like that and who you're around. Like and, write it down. Be yeah. like, I was with Pablo, Pablo, not <laughs> it, you know, like write it down, you know, so that you can just like constantly because you're going to keep putting yourself in a cycle. And like so many of us don't make new friends. Yeah. They think like, oh, we've been friends. Like we have to be friends. But like, no, like I would even like I'm kind of weird, though, I guess. But like I, you know, one of my really good friends now, like we just messaged on Instagram. I kind of saw the way that she lived her life on yeah. Instagram. She's also a creator. And a business owner, a creator, very healthy, going to bed early. I was like, we have a lot in common. I can really see that. Yeah. We 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 were messaging and we're like, let's go on a walk and hang That's out. So cool. Now she's one of my closest friends. But I wow. really saw like we had so much in common. So it's like, go make new friends. Like, yeah. go on friend dates. It's really scary and it takes a lot of time to build that. Um, and friendships are a lot of work. But if once you put it in and get past that line, then you get to the comfortable phase, and yeah. it's so nice. Yeah. Wow, you're amazing. I can't even believe that you went to go live in Puerto Rico. I feel like you should tell people that, that you went to live. Like, she's just amazing. She built her business, made so much money. and was like, I'm not going to pay the taxes I'm paying here. I'm going to go live somewhere else. So she's just like, goes to the extreme. I'm like, you're going to go move there? And you did. You How long did you live there? I lived there for a year and a half. Wow. And you met so many other like successful entrepreneurs. And that was really, really such a cool time in my life because everybody on the island was entrepreneurs, um, at least in in, uh, in our community, you know, um, and in the island, there was so much culture. You know, I got to learn Spanish. Like I really there was just so much cool stuff that I took away from it. Yeah. But yeah, so many beautiful entrepreneurs who were like minded and I could really, you know, we drove golf carts around and all hung out every day. And it was just, it was a really cool experience. A lot of them were older than me. Yeah. Um, so I think that's kind of what brought me back here. They were all married with kids and I really need to, you know, kind of find my way and hustle um, yeah. in LA again. But um, name some of the types of people that are there. Like you don't have to say their names, like in businesses, like the, wasn't like one of the owners of like, PayPal or something there? Oh, yeah. there. Yeah. So there's a bunch of big SPAC owners, a bunch of stock guys, a bunch of crypto billionaires, like a lot of people who have remote careers. Yeah, you know? like some content creators. There was oh, a lot yeah. Of content Logan Paul's creators. there. Jake Paul's there. They're my neighbors down the street. You got like, there's just so many. That's in Puerto Rico. There's like a whole group of entrepreneurs and like successful people living there. When she told me that, I was like, that's insane. Yeah. And then outside, like, so there's like this little community and then outside, it's like, there's so much culture on the island and such cool, like, I love adventure. There's so many waterfalls and cool things to do and really pushing myself to learn another language and challenging myself in that and understanding another culture was so awesome. So yeah. if you guys can live somewhere else, go do it. I know. I've never, I grew up here. I know we yeah, grew yeah. up so close to each other. Yeah, uh, really? <laughs> eventually I'll be you, Kenzie. You are. I look at you Eventually, all the time I'll and I'm like, a bucket list. you, you do so much. So don't be hard on yourself because you inspire so many people. You. you just need to expand, you know, how well-rounded. Yeah. Cause now you, your bucket of work, like you've achieved so much. I think you need to give that to yourself. I think you're really hard on yourself too. Like yeah. you're not there. You're not there, but you are, you know, live in this moment and yeah. be like, what you've achieved, so many people would dream to achieve, you know? Yeah. So you got to reward so true, yourself. that's Because that's like with anything, like you have to reward when you're, I noticed that, I noticed that so much. I was like, I, I can tell it from someone else when I'm listening to their problems, but then it's hard to take that advice for yourself. But like I saw one of my friends was like, complaining about situations that were happening with their work and then I was like but didn't you just get this like this thing that you've wanted and they're like yeah and I'm like well then celebrate it yeah like celebrate the wins you and like it. if you don't celebrate that you're not gonna get more and then she started celebrating stuff and now she's like oh my god I'm never gonna not do that again like my life but, but now you I don't got more do that stuff. I know now I'm not doing it and I'm like yeah I literally wrote it on my computer like celebrate the wins because I need to like pay attention to it because yeah. it's hard you constantly are like the next thing the next thing and it's it's really and I think those wins are different for everyone there's a lot of people that it could be like actually committing like waking up and actually going to the gym that day like celebrating yeah. that or like anything in your life it's like focusing on being congratulating yourself and being your own like biggest cheerleader yeah like because you you have to do it you have to make yourself feel proud of yourself yeah. To keep doing the things you want to do. Yeah. I think you should really like set your next goal and be like, when this happens, you're going to go travel somewhere and you're going to take the time off. Yeah. Like not have your phone. Okay. You inspired <laughs> me. I'm going to do it. Cause I can only, I can imagine you not having your phones, plural. <laughs> <laughs> I know. 
know. I know. <laughs> oh my god, it's a lot. It's a lot because I even like I even had um my first like panic attack. And it's crazy. I never even had like I never thought I was someone that had anxiety. Yeah. And then I was like, wow, I do. And I didn't know what anxiety was and all this stuff, but it just shows like, yeah, when you're yeah, clearly like working yourself like that and constantly trying to achieve things can create different yeah. things that come up for you that you're like, what is this feeling? Right. And you got to listen to your body, you know, yeah. to know like, okay, if I'm feeling like this, there was actually this really cool thing that I saw. And it was like, if you in, in if you have a partner, you know, it could be your sister or it could be your partner, but it was like, sit down once a month and like write out, I have to send to you. I saw, I saw it on Instagram and it was like, write out the things that are giving you anxiety, write out the things yeah. that like aren't making you. And it was like really intentional. And I was like, imagine if you actually thought about it and been like, whoa, this yeah. is giving me anxiety. This is like making me feel a way, you know, I feel like we would take one step closer to fixing that. That's so true. You know, cause most of the time we're just like, Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. And if anything, we almost don't, don't want to pay attention to it. We like try to ignore it. Like, Oh, I'm good. But what, by doing that, you're right. We are living in a cycle. I love that you said that before you're like, if you don't pay attention to who's mm -hmm. draining your energy, you're just going back into the same situations. Yeah. And then you're like, I'm so drained. I'm like, well. I'm so depressed. What's going on? That's yeah. so cool. You're like stopping and actually like, looking at your life that's cool yeah i need to do that more let's go into your relationships okay how does someone date someone like you you're like the ultimate package do you guys get intimidated by that i feel like you're such a overachiever that i yeah. feel like guys probably do you know i've had a few long relationships now and the last two were not good you know i'm all i mean my first one my very public one all the you guys all know about it but um we'll tell everyone that doesn't know <laughs> she dated a very famous youtuber yeah i dated a very famous youtuber um years ago and um, named <laughs> named vitaly and, and he was like an ultimate like pranker for the people that don't know like he like pranked he did he was just huge for pranks on youtube and did some yeah. of the wildest stuff you've ever seen and got in so many headlines and 10 million plus followers on YouTube, like crazy. So anyway, she dated him and it was a very public relationship. Yeah, very public. And we kind of became that adventure, prank, comedy couple. And um, I think that was, it was nice because we shared the career for him. So I don't think that he felt in, insecure by it or anything like that. But I think it was just, it got out of control. And I think dating people in who have a lot of, you know, power or money or status um, for men, at least, I think it gives them a lot of other options yeah. or they always want more, you know, and he got famous really young. I mean, he was the first big YouTuber. And um, so he, it, he always wanted more and more and more. And so it didn't matter what I could do for him. And that was like my first big heartbreak when he cheated on me. And then my next relationship, he was very insecure. He, I was like, I don't want to date someone in the limelight. Done with that. I want a businessman. I'm an entrepreneur. I want to date a business guy. I dated a business guy, um, very successful guy. Um, and it was really because he, he did not make time for anything else but his work. Um, I just would do everything for him just to get any kind of like please see me, you know? Yeah. And yeah, um, he just didn't have the mental capacity to be in a relationship, you know? His whole life was his work. And so that was not a good relationship, but I learned a lot. And yeah. so I think like all dating is hard. I just, if you're an entrepreneur or not or me or whatever, but I think like if you are um, a really driven woman, you have to be very cautious because men do... Um, guys really love it at first when they start dating me. They're so excited. This is so cool. You know, you're well known and you, you're, you're successful and you have money or whatever. And then a few months in, they're like, whoa, this is a lot. You know, <laughs> this is a lot. And, or also like, I can't keep up with you. Yeah, or, I wonder if it brings out insecurities in them. Yeah. And I think that's why my t past two relationships getting cheated on, like, I do think it was a lot of like, in, a lot of cheating is insecurity. Yeah, you know, for sure. Wanting that validation from someone else outside the relationship. And so hopefully, I mean, I'm in a new relationship now and he's very secure, very supportive. Um, and I hope it, you know, it's different. But I think every relationship has their challenge. Yeah. But I definitely do think being a woman in 
that role, it is very different, you know? Yeah, like in business in general for females that are doing successful, it probably is intimidating. Intimidating. Yeah, because it's a natural instinct to want to provide as a man, you know? And it's a beautiful thing, like the testosterone and the estrogen, like it's our natural instinct to cook and clean and provide for a man in that way that we can. And so kind of when that dynamic is thrown out, our natural like hormone dynamic it is just different. So I'm trying to find a more feminine side of me as well where oh, I come into that role. You're teaching me a lot today. You know? I, to too. <laughs> I want to be that role and I want to be a mom and I want to be able to do it all. And so I think I've just kind of come to the conclusion, at least for me, that right now I'm really grinding in my career, but I do plan on taking a step back uh, when I have kids and get married and be able to come in more into a feminine role. I'm not saying anybody else has to, but I think for me, I do have that side and I really over dominate it with my powerhouse side. And I just don't, I think it's, so there's something beautiful about being feminine. You know, and so I'm like, if I work 20 hours a week, hopefully my business will be at a place where I can take a step back, have my kids, have my husband, take care of those sides and take care of my business, have that balance. And I do think you can get there. I think the core for like me always wanting to be successful was just like the idea of like never wanting to settle or need a man. Like I hate that made me feel so uncomfortable. Like the idea of marrying someone just for money. I was like, that's so depressing. Like if I want to be, if I want to be able to have these things in life, I have to marry someone and I could not even love them. Like I couldn't think of anything worse. And I've seen a lot of people do that. And even like, I mean, I think it's a horrible idea. Like even with my ex and him being very successful, he really wanted me to not work and be the wife. And I gave up a lot of opportunity for him. He's that's, I thought that's what I wanted. And then when it came down to it, when he cheated on me, I was in this position where like, I'm like, oh my God, I see now where women are like, well, this is his house, his cars, you know, like, yeah what do you do? You can't leave. And then you're just okay with a guy treating you bad. So I think there's a fine line, Yeah. but finding that relationship where that man will never make you feel like that no matter what. Yeah. Because you know, with my current boyfriend, I have the conversation where like, I'm successful and I can continue with my career. But if we have kids, this needs to be like understanding the partnership. Like, okay, sweetie, to my boyfriend, you could stay home with the kids because I can go make a lot of money in my career. But it needs to be understood that like everybody's doing their part and it needs to be like, it's no one's money or not, you know, because raising a family and holding down the household is such a big portion. So if I'm going to give that up, it needs to be like a safe understanding, like, okay, it's our money. Or if not, he can gladly stay home with the kids. I'll provide. (laughs) But (laughs) that's me, my masculine side (laughs) jumping in. But then I want to be able, the person I'm marrying, if I don't trust them enough to be able to fulfill that side and feel comfortable taking a step back for our children, I'll never marry them. You know, and I feel like that's why you need to know enough, like who the person is marrying you, you know, and uh, having those difficult conversations that it's like, what roles are we going to play? Are we going to have a nanny and we both work the same? Awesome. You know, or is it like, that's going to be me. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and you, nothing wrong with having help too. I'm probably, you know, but it, I just the can't realistic see of it ever is not like wanting to do stuff. The man can't like when you have a baby, and now a lot of my friends have babies. Like you're when they're a newborn, you're breastfeeding every two hours. Yeah, I know you have to you, do that. during the night. The man can, isn't getting up and breastfeeding for two hours. This is what we can, are doing. This yeah. is our body. This is our gift that we can provide for a child, and the man can't do that. So there's a reason that yeah, it's makes sense. Put the way it is, you know. Yeah, eventually I'll have that feeling <laughs> to stay yeah. home and be a mother. Hopefully, or even like my goal is like part time. If I could work like thirty hours a week and then be really involved in my kid's life like maybe just have like five hours a day of help yeah and then get home by you know two or three yeah that's great you know and be really present the rest of the time I don't think I can ever not work yeah it's, you know that would be hard really do hard. you do, what do you feel like is your internal feeling for wanting to achieve so much like what is that like fear deep down that you're because mine is that it's like feeling that not feeling secure thing of like feeling like I need someone in order to feel secure made me always feel like motivated. Right. I mean, I kind of really relate to that. I think my biggest fear in life is security. It's yeah. something that causes me the most anxiety. Same. Um, I kind of have a bad relationship with money, you know, yeah. and uh, feeling like I really need a lot to be able to feel Same. secure. Same. And it's bad, you know, it's bad, but it's why we always achieve so much, you know, because we're never content in that. So I've really been diving in and trying to work on my relationship with that and the insecurity of it because, you know, 
so many other people have different situations and they're fine, you know, so we should be yeah. fine. But I'm <sighs> listening to the Tony Robbins money book or whatever, oh, like your nice. relationship with money. I'm listening to that right now. So I'm working on it right now too. Yeah. But I don't <laughs> think we're ever going to like a fully get over that or feel secure, you know? So it's just going to be a constant battle that you just got to go with, you know, and be yeah. like, that's your thing. You want to feel secure, but you kind of already are, you know, yeah. I believe this book that I absolutely love is called secrets of the millionaire mind. And I'll link it in the description, but I listened to it on audible and I literally have listened to it like 10 times. And then it was cool because my mom listened to it first a few times. And then she just started making so much more money in her career. And she's like, I don't know. It just clicked with me. And I was like, why isn't it clicking with me? I remember a while ago, cause I listened to it. It was years ago. And then I was like, I just need to keep listening to it. So I listened to it like multiple times and then it, it finally clicked. So anyways, you, sh you guys need to listen to it. You need to listen to okay. it. I need to listen Adding to it, it. To my audible. but it's definitely about your relationship with money and like the, the way that like our upbringing, our upbringing affects the way we look at money oh and like gosh, different, sure. yeah, yeah, different things we're told as a kid. And then like the way that what, and starting to notice different things, like how you feel about when you're spending and yeah. like, like what relationship do you have? Do you feel like you're giving it away or do you feel like you're, you're giving like it back for more to come, like your energy yeah. with it. So there's like a scarcity mindset. Someone told me once that it was like me being so afraid of always losing money and being like needing the security and being like, Oh, it's, you know, I have to save it all. Like I'm just a crazy saver. Like I'm so frugal. And, <laughs> and then they're like, that's a scarcity mindset, which is attracting less financial you yeah. know, gain into your life. Instead of being like, I know more money's going to come. Exactly. That kind of mindset. So I try and think like that, but it's a battle. Yeah, it is a battle. And it, I don't know if it works for everyone because one time my sister dated this guy and he said to her, he's like, yeah, I get the, the, I got my new Range Rover. It was, too, I felt like it was a little too expensive, but I told myself I'm going to get that car because I'm going to make sure that I can afford it. Nice. And he's like, and then I do. So I'm like, oh, so it's, it's, oh. it's it, it, I guess it depends on who you are too. And like really. Yeah. We would never get a car we couldn't afford. I know. That's <laughs> Never. I was like, that's beautiful. Makes I was feel, like, wait. <laughs> makes me feel sick. <laughs> okay. Lastly, let's talk about you being a real estate developer. Okay. I've been, since I've known you, you wanted to get into real estate and own properties and all this stuff. And now you're developing homes. So kind of walk us through like what that's like. What does someone do? Like, where does someone first start when they want to do that? Um, It's cool. It's a cool career because anybody can do it, you know? And that's what I really like. And it was like, Anybody can become really successful at it too. It's really, really difficult, just like any business that you're starting. But um, you can just start flipping before you're obviously developing. Developing is ground up construction. Instead, you can just be flipping houses. The cool thing about like flipping houses is that you can, it's an, un, it's a very unlimited scalable company, you know, like if, once you have your systems down, which is the process of finding deals, raising funds, and then doing the actual construction and then selling the deal, um, which obviously so much goes into that. But when you have a system and you have a team, you can do 50 to 100 properties a year, you know? Jesus. And then you can continue to scale up doing big developments. And like that cash flow, you can make, you know, millions doing that. That cash flow can um, be invested into your long-term holds. Um, like your apartment complexes, that is going to build you that financial freedom. So for me, it's like I want to, because of that scarcity mindset, that security that I always needed, I want passive income. Yeah. I want that for sure. I'm going to be making X amount per month from my rent coming in from my tenants. So that was something that always really intrigued me. And so that's what got me into real estate. And I always wanted to do it. I just never dove in and did it. Yeah. So I locked down this last year and dove in and like been grinding our butts off. But like what I've learned in this last year is insane. So I think anybody who wants to get into it, I would maybe take a course or something. I took a course. It really did help me, but also like just go do it. So did you take like a real estate course or did you take like a real estate development course, like of how to like fix homes and stuff? Yeah. Um, a specifically fixing homes course. Wow. But then from there, now that I know, okay, any of my profits I want to put into long-term rentals also to 
to defer taxes. So um, explain that a little more to us. Okay. That we're news, we're newbies <laughs> to this whole thing. Go ahead. Um, okay. So yeah, say you make a certain amount. So you can be flipping a house. You go buy it for 1 million, you put 200,000 into it, and then maybe you go sell it for like one six or whatever. Or if you can do it on the lower end too, but in Los Angeles, unfortunately, that is the lower end. <laughs> Um, but even if you don't have money, honestly, like I have all my money tied up in other deals. So I've had to go hit the streets and raise funds yeah. and anybody can go raise funds, call your cousin, call your uncle. You'd, you'd be so surprised. Like my sister was like, Oh, I have a hundred K from her engineering job and was like, I want to wow. invest it because we give really great returns. So you can raise money from anybody. So wow. go, the biggest thing is finding a great deal. Go find the crappiest property ever in the best neighborhood and get it under contract you know go door knocking do cold calling like find people who want to sell um that aren't really on market and then you have to buy it at a discount and then renovate it and sell it and you can make hundreds of thousands from that and each property then scale it to make millions on doing a bunch and then when you so make- how do you know the difference between a property that you like fix up and rent out to get passive income or actually invest to keep the property so that it constantly makes you money or I mean sorry one that you just buy and then sell or one that you You buy and hold um it's a personal decision a lot of people I know will actually their whole strategy is instead of flipping it they buy and hold all the single family homes wow I don't I like to flip the single family homes and own the apartment complexes wow you know so I'd rather flip the single family homes and take my profit and go buy a building where I have a ton of tenants uh, rather than some of my friends who have like two hundred single family homes and they're creating a lot of passive income, but it's just a lot more doors and a lot yeah. more maintenance and things like that instead of having one building with two hundred units in it. Yeah. So it's every everybody's plan is different and and whatever works for them. That's what's cool Jesus about Jesus Christ. I can't believe you're gonna do you own an apartment complex right now or no. you're that's your goal. That's, that's so our goal. sick. So now we flip all the houses, we have the the income and then now we're you're looking saving into, up to can I invest in your apartment complex? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, and that's what we'll do. I mean, we have our real estate podcast, actually. Blonde's Building Equity is me, my best friend. Super cool. And all we do now is real estate. It's really fun because we're two young blondes, like, in this industry, it's really male dominated. You guys have to go listen to that if you're interested in building wealth with real estate, which yeah. we all know is the, like the best way to build wealth. Yeah. You have to listen to our podcast talking about it. And especially now, I mean, we're, we're in a recession. It's it's confirmed now, you guys. It's not even we're going into a recession. The GDP scores for the last two quarters, we're in a recession. Things are getting really bad. It's going to be really bad for the next two years. So um, two years is so long. I know. But also, this is the time like imagine 2008 this is the time opportunity of our lifetime to go buy things at the craziest discount the economy is going to be really hurting people need to offload their properties nobody wants to buy interest rates are too high so you need to go get creative financing figure out a way to go buy those properties you know from those people who are distressed and there's so many options you can even just like one strategy that we're doing now is like it's like a subject to because interest rates are so high um, and you know, maybe two years ago they were getting like a 3% or whatever. I want that 3%. So say yeah. you're in distress, you own this apartment complex. I'm going to go to you and say, I'll take it from you. I'm going to take over your mortgage. Oh, it's called wow. subject to. So you, now you assign your mortgage to me. Oh, wow. So now I have a 3% instead of going and getting an 8% if you would have sold it to me. So I pay off what, because you're in a distress. Nobody would normally do that. But if you're really trying to offload the property, I'll pay you full value. Wow. But you're going to assign the mortgage to me. So I pay off your loan and maybe a little extra. But now I inherit that 3% mortgage. Jeez, that's so cool. Yeah. So there's so many options. So this is what I do. On, I'm like a real estate nerd on on my everyday now, but it's hard. It's, it's fuck. I was gonna say, how do you even <laughs> begin really to hard. find? Like, how do you even know when someone that wants to get rid of their property? Like, where do you begin to find that? Cold calling, sending out mailers. So do you see? Like, do you go on Zillow? I go on Zillow every morning. By the way, you you love I it. I swear, I'm obsessed. I yeah. just look at houses all the time. For it's so fun. It's like it's my fun. pastime. But um. Do you, do you look online and then see houses that are for sale and then call them? Or like, where do you begin to find listings? Not typically, because once they're on the market, they're kind of unrealistic. I mean, times are changing. So now maybe, but it's usually off market properties we find. Wow. So we have people called wholesalers that work for us who go find the deals. Wow. That's know? cool. And they'll make a cut. So say the house is worth a million or they go get it under contract. That means they're door knocking. They're talking to random people. Do you want to sell your house? We'll buy it yeah. right now. Cash. 
then that person, if they agree to a million, the wholesaler will then sell, sell it to me wow. for maybe one million fifty thousand. Oh, so okay. now that wholesaler just made fifty thousand. Wow, so that's a good job too to be so a wholesaler. Wholesalers, I know wholesalers who make a couple million a year if they're a hustler. Like it, and it's a job you don't need any capital because wow. you just get the the verbal agreement from the owner and then you sell the deal to me. So I buy the deal. That's you know, crazy. so they don't need to buy the deal, but they just made fifty grand. Wow. So if you're doing a couple of transactions a month, yeah, you can really make a lot of money. There's wholesaling companies that like run and they make so much money. That's because cool. they don't want to do the work. They don't want to flip the house. They don't want to go through that headache. They just want to find a good deal and give it to an investor. Wow! But they help me out because if that was on the market, that deal would have been one point three. He's giving it to me for one million fifty. That's cool. So it works for everybody in the relationship. I love my wholesalers. Okay, are you going to help me with real estate, Kenzie? Yeah. yeah. It's official. It's on camera. You it's have to help camera. me. I have never bought in a house yet. We're going to get passive income. I know. And, and one of the things that's really cool about owning property, right, that I keep having everyone tell us or tell me is that you can write it off towards your taxes for depreciation, right, of the house. Yeah. Yeah. So every accountant looks at me and they're like, why don't you own property? I'm like, well, I But it I can't be like your personal scary. residence. Yeah. It has to be um, a rental. Yeah. So how it works, which is genius. Like uh, that's the reason I was like, whoa. So w- this guy that I know, he's a billionaire in real estate he, in California, pays no tax. And I was like, mind blown. I'm like, what do you mean? You're a billionaire and you don't pay taxes, you know? And then there's something called cost seg and depreciation. Um, it's really complex. So this might be, in, but you can depreciate an asset for 27 years. So what people do is they do accelerated depreciation and they write it off. Like, so you can have a business that you're making a ton of money and then you can have your property. And by doing the cost seg depreciation on that property, it offsets your income in your other business. But there's a lot of legality to it. Like you need to be a real estate professional. So in my case, like say my husband, you know, he's a, he does venture capital, my, my future husband or whatever. And he makes a lot of money. I am technically a real estate professional because I'm a licensed real estate professional. If we're married, I can offset all of his earned income by buying his properties. And Jesus so we Christ. don't pay any taxes. Holy shit, you're blowing my mind. It's really, it's really, it's a lot harder than it looks, you know, but yeah. that's why for me, my active income is flipping houses. My passive income is buying an apartment complex to cost seg. So say I made a million in my house flipping business, I need to go now buy a $3 million building and with a loan, you know, because you yeah. use that million as a down payment and then I can, can write off that entire million taxes. Wow. So then it's like, it, and then now you're building wealth, you got equity in the building, but you have to be able to move that money, you know, and understand that you're putting it somewhere else right now. Yeah. And you can always refi out later. So that's kind of the strategy is like, you go put that million in and you add value and then you get an appraiser and then they come appraise it for 4 million and you refi your million back out. So there's a lot of steps that goes into it. So cool. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so hopefully one day, you guys, all, I'm going to be a billionaire, but right now I'm just hustling and struggling. You you saw it here first. You marked yeah. your word, so I'm so excited. So everyone knows about Blondes Building Equity now. Tell us where else we can find you. Um, so yeah, well, Blondes Building Equity is my real estate business, but if you guys are interested in following me personally, um, my name is Kinsey. It's just Kinsey on Instagram, K-I-N-S-E-Y. And on TikTok, it's Kinsey Walansky. I post all the time. But if you really are interested in real estate, follow all Blondes Building Equity on all platforms, including YouTube. What is your billion dollar quality that got you to where you are now? I would say drive. I think it does not matter. I mean, how smart you are, really. It just matters how hard you're going to work. So true. Amazing. When, When you envision yourself in three years from now, where will you be? Wow, that's a good question. I mean, hopefully in three years, um, I would be engaged, hopefully. (laughs) That point, ready to kind of settle down. And then I would be really deep into my real estate empire that I would own definitely a few buildings and really be... A few buildings. Yeah, a few buildings. That's so cool. Yeah, hopefully. That's so cool. And then what's your favorite social media platform and why? 
My favorite social media platform is TikTok. I really love TikTok. I think it's more organic. Like I always am like, oh, this fo- photo is not good enough for Instagram. Like you always. overthink it. I kind of post whatever on TikTok. It's yeah. so like it's carefree. It's really just fun. And I like I prefer to go on TikTok actually too. I learn a lot. There's yeah. a lot of like story times. I think it's just more real. I agree. Yeah. I definitely agree. TikTok's the best. That's why everyone loves it. It's so authentic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so thank you for coming on. I really appreciate you being here. Please, everyone, tell us what your favorite clips were or what resonated with you the most. Kenzie and I are going to be reading your comments. And please come back and visit us every week for a new Billion Dollar Baby episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. (laughs)